In 2001, São Paulo were playing Botafogo in the final of the Rio São Paulo tournament, something they had never won. As they were 15 minutes away from the final whistle, they decided to bring in a young player that had only played two other professional matches. Two minutes later, he had scored twice and led São Paulo to their first ever win in a tournament. As you looked at the score sheet, you'd see an interesting name, Ricardo Kaká. His talent would be so easily notable that he would only manage to spend two full seasons in Brazil before getting snatched by an European giant. During his time there, he would manage to score 47 goals in 91 matches, winning the league's Player of the Year award at just 19 years old. Before moving to Europe, he would also take part in his first international tournament, the 2002 World Cup. Being so young, he would only play for 25 minutes total, but as Brazil won the tournament, he would still collect his World Cup medal at 19 years of age. By 2003, European clubs were willing to do whatever it took to sign the kid. AC Milan would be the ones to win the race, signing him for just 8.5 million euros. As a new signing, he would come off the bench a lot in his first few months in Italy. Still, he would manage to be involved in 21 goals that year, as AC Milan would win the Scudetto. The next season, he would be moved to a supporting role, playing behind Shevchenko, and his assist numbers would skyrocket. By the end of 2004, he would be named Serie A Player of the Year, despite it being his first year ever in the league. The 2004-2005 season would be shocking in terms of silverware, as despite having one of the strongest teams in the world, AC Milan would end the year with only one trophy, the Italian Super Cup. Despite this, the year would still be very notable in Kaká's career, as he would make it to his first ever Champions League final. By the 44th minute, Kaká would assist the third AC Milan goal. This huge lead by halftime would give the team some extra confidence as it seemed like they would easily take the trophy home, but unfortunately that day would be remembered on other terms, as Liverpool would score three times in six minutes and eventually go on to win the game in penalties. Still, Kaká would win UEFA Midfielder of the Year. In the summer, he would take part in his second international tournament, the Confederations Cup. This time he would play in all of the five matches and even score in the final as Brazil would once again take the trophy home. The next year would be most notorious for the Calciopoli scandal, which saw AC Milan get deducted 30 points, as they impressively still managed to finish third that year. Then, he would take part in his second World Cup as Brazil presented an incredibly strong offensive team with Ronaldinho, Adriano and Ronaldo Fenomeno partnering up with Kaká. Sadly, their defense was nowhere as capable and they would lose to France in the quarterfinals. Despite the Calciopoli scandal being a stain in Kaká's career, it would be easily looked past as the next year would be the best of his career. With the departure of Chepchenko, he would start playing as a second striker behind Filippo Inzaghi. That year, he would score 19 goals, 10 of them in the Champions League, as he managed to be involved in a goal every 87 minutes in the competition. The first big show of his strength would come as he scored his first ever hat-trick against Anderlecht in the group stage. His best performance of the season would come in the semi-finals against Manchester United, as he would manage to score three times with two of the goals being scored at Old Trafford, despite AC Milan losing that first match 3-2. As I read once in an article, few remember the final score, but everyone remembers Kaká's performance. In the final, they would meet Liverpool once again and Kaká would assist in Zaghi's second goal of the day as AC Milan won over Liverpool and took home their seventh Champions League trophy. That season, Kaká would become the first ever midfielder to score 10 or more goals in the Champions League and also become the last player to win the Ballon d'Or before the Ronaldo and Messi era. It would be a whole decade before someone else managed to surpass them. He would keep his momentum and win the Club World Cup and the European Super Cup as he went into the next season. But this would be the last few moments of glory at AC Milan, as the club would go on a heavy descent, not even qualifying to the UCL. During his last two seasons at Italy, Kaká's most iconic moments would come during 2009 as he would take part in another Confederations Cup, despite not taking part in the Copa America that awarded Brazil the qualification. Kaká would be elemental to the Brazilian squad and would eventually earn the Man of the Match performance in the final against the USA. As Brazil won the tournament once again, Kaká would take home the golden ball. As he came back from the tournament, it had been made official. Kaká was gonna finally leave Italy. He would join Real Madrid for a fee of 67 million euros, one of the highest ever transfers. It would soon be outshined as Real Madrid would also buy Cristiano Ronaldo. With the two latest Ballon d'Or's winners at Santiago Bernabeu, the future looked hopeful, but it wouldn't look that way for much longer. After a first season where Kaká looked to adapt to a new league, he would participate in his last ever World Cup, where despite finishing the tournament as top assist provider, Brazil would be knocked out in the quarterfinals. But then, the worst would happen. 
Kaká would go through complications in his knee injury and be out for 8 months. As he came back, it would only be 2 months before he was out again for a few weeks. This time, as he came back, he would look promising, scoring twice against Valencia. Following this, he would manage to finish the season without any more major injuries. The start to the next season would be his best time in the last few years, even winning the Player of the Week award in the Champions League as he was essential for Real Madrid as they defeated Ajax 3-0. He would be involved in 24 goals in all competitions as Real Madrid broke the record for most points earned in a La Liga season. In the UCL, they would once again crash out in the semi-finals as Kaká became the top assist provider in the tournament that season. The next would be his final season at Real Madrid as his form would decline and he would no longer be seen as a suitable option for the starting eleven. By the start of the 2013-2014 season, Kaká would announce that he was leaving for AC Milan on a free transfer. And it was an unfortunate time to leave Real Madrid as they were about to win four of the next five Champions League editions. In his first appearance for his old club, he would captain the team, but later, in his first competitive match, he would tear one of his thigh muscles. The player felt so desperate that he would, in a gesture of grace, decide not to take his salary from the club while he remained injured. He would come back and regardless of how many moments of genius he put on display, he was clearly a shadow of his past self. And AC Milan were worse than they had ever been, only finishing 8th in the league. It was time to let go, and so he did. After only one season at AC Milan, he would leave for the MLS where he would sign for Orlando City. In an odd turn of events, he would be loaned out to Sao Paulo, the club where he had started his career, and would play for them for just four months to finish what was left of the season before actually starting to play for Orlando City. His time in Orlando would be great, as he helped the new franchise to success, as they would even manage to be the defending champions by four goals. His performances would be enough to get him a place in the All-Star game, where he would even captain the team. After all, there aren't many Ballon d'Or winners playing in the MLS. In the All-Star match, he would score and win the MVP award as the team defeated Tottenham Hotspurs. Despite all this, he would not be able to get Orlando to earn a place in the playoffs. The next season he would once again be out due to injury. Once he came back, he nearly managed one goal contribution per 100 minutes played, but would still not be enough to get the team to the playoffs. In his final seasons it would only take a few minutes of playing time before he fell onto the ground in pain, he would be out for weeks once again. This time he would come back looking significantly weaker and as the team failed to qualify once again he would announce that this would be his last ever professional season. Kaká was quick, elegant, precise and a hard-working midfielder. In his first years it seemed like he had it in him to be one of the greatest of all time, but injuries stopped what could have lasted for much longer. Some might even argue that the injuries weren't enough to stop him from achieving such heights and that the time we had to witness his peak was enough to realize that he deserved a place amongst the greats. Regardless, He'll forever be remembered as the man who climbed the podium as Ronaldo and Messi sat below him. Kaká was memorizing and that is timeless. Getting into our ranking system now, starting with finishing, we're talking about someone who scored many goals but these did not come necessarily from his exceptional finishing but from how easily he could get himself in dangerous positions. He gets an 8 out of 10. Kaká's influence on the pitch was as notorious as it can be. He gets a 10 out of 10 when it comes to playmaking. His dribbling always reminded me of Zidane. He was so smooth, so elegant, a pleasure to watch. And he gets another 10 out of 10. In terms of his speed and physicality, he gets a 9 out of 10. He was tall and fast at the same time, but he was not necessarily one of the toughest players, so that prevents him from getting a higher score. And finally, his mentality. I don't think he was ever very exceptional in this aspect as he never seemed like someone desperate to win, but he was never problematic either, so he gets a 7 out of 10. When it comes to his legacy, we take into account his consistency, and although he wasn't the most consistent player across the multiple clubs he played for, that was probably due to injury, so he'll get a 7 out of 10. Now, Flair. They don't get much more aesthetically pleasing than Kaká. He was art on the pitch. He gets a 10 out of 10. His trophy cabinet is odd to say the least, only 13 titles, but in them we have a World Cup and a Champions League, but he barely contributed to the World Cup and with only two league titles in his career, he can only get a 7 out of 10. 
When it comes to longevity, it's honestly just sad. His peak lasted literally about 4 seasons, maybe 7 if you want to count the first years in Europe and some of his time at Real, but that can only get him a 4 out of 10. Finally, the icon factor. I think he was honestly one of those players that the kids just sort of forgot and don't really even remember, but that might be because of how short his prime was, and the people who did see him surely didn't forget him, so he gets a 7 out of 10. That adds up to 79 out of 100, putting him right below Ronaldinho, which shows just how good he could have been had he not been severely injured so soon. It only takes a look at his technical score to realize how good he was. This was Ricardo Kaká's career in a video, I hope you enjoyed, see you next time.